We're standing on the Athabasca Glacier, and we have an unnamed glacier on the mountain behind us here. Kent, tell us about the glacier back there. Well, our, that glacier was at one time joined with the Athabasca Glacier when this was much higher in elevation. So that glacier came in from the side valley, joined the Athabasca, and they both flowed off to our right. Since the ice melt has started, it has retreated back as well, and it's now hanging over that cliff face. So you notice uh, that, that some parts of that glacier are smooth and others seem really corrugated or crevassed. What's the cause of that? Well, we have to remember that the glaciers are flowing. They're always moving. The ice is always moving down slope, no matter what the inputs are uh, in the winter. So the ice is moving down slope, but there's friction at the base of the glacier and on the sides of the glacier. So the bottom of the glacier is being held back by friction, and that means the top of the glacier is flowing a little bit faster, okay? So what happens is when the glacier comes over a change in topography, because it's flowing faster on the top, that ice has to do something, it splits. So when you see those crevasses, that's when it's going over a topography like this and the tension is causing the crevasses to open up. Where you see no crevasses or very smooth surfaces, there's compression happening where it's moving into an area. So you don't get the crevasses there. The other thing is there's friction on the sides. So the sides of the glacier are flowing slower than the center. The bottom is slower than the top. So that means the glacier, when it comes down to the snout, has this arced face uh, front to it and then crevasses will split back from that arc face as it tends to splay out. 